pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, BookTube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with a debut of a slight tweak to the page 112 tag. I'm calling this one the predictions version. And let me tell you why I'm trying it and what it's all about. I've commented a few times before that the way that the French Literary Prize is done, where the jurors adjudicate page 112 blindly, where they don't know the title and the author, and then from that they generate a shortlist. That's what the page 112 prize is all about. It's really unnatural and kind of useless for us everyday readers. Most of us, if this has any use at all in our reading lives, it is that we're in a bookstore or a library or we're perusing our own shelves and we are trying to decide which book we want to buy, borrow, or read next. And so we know the author, we know the title, we've probably read the back cover copy, but reading page 112 is a great way to assess the writing and see whether it sparks our interest or quells it. So in this version, I am not going to keep the identity of the books secret. I'm going to tell you up front, and I am going to use this to predict whether I'm going to like these books and how much I'm going to like these books. If I know from reading page 112 that I will definitely bail, it's not going to be included on this tag video because what's the point? But if I think it's going to be a, a bail or maybe three stars, because my cutoff is three stars. If I Once I know a book is two stars or one stars, it's automatically bail. Like life is too short, what the hell? Even three stars. Three stars is a big disappointment. Four stars is somewhat of a disappointment. And five stars is... I'm happy. Feel free to try to guess my reaction, as well as gauging your own. That's the most enjoyable part of this tag. For people that enjoy it, is just doing your own assessment as you listen to me natter on. Okay? So, I'm going to tell you about each book. I'm going to read the page 112. I'm going to give you my comments but I won't give you my rating such as it is until the end. And then the next step will be once I've read or bailed on these three books, I will do a follow-up video. And over the longer term, I'm going to assess, does this page 112 method work? Is it an accurate gauge of how much I'm going to like, hate, or the degree, the, the chance that I'm going to bail on a book over the longer term. That's the method in my madness. All right. So today I have three debuts and they're all available to me as ebooks on Scribd. So I printed out the papers. I have read them to myself three or four times, checked pronunciation, developed my initial reaction beyond the in the moment. One of the things that I started to dislike about the way that I had been doing this tag was I wouldn't read it at all. I'd read it to you while filming and I'd have a very preliminary reaction. And then often I would be confused about what I'd read and I'd have to stop and kind of reread it and figure out what was going on or try to get more of a handle on it and edit out all the stupid preliminary <laughs> conclusions I was making. And then by the time I was editing the video, I'd kind of changed my mind about how much I liked or didn't like or hated the writing. So no, from now on, all of my page 112 tags, I'm going to be spending time with these excerpts. For the blind tags, I won't know who's written it, fine. But I'm going to be spending a lot more time sitting with and rereading and assessing these before I ever film the video, because I think it's better. Okay, so the first book I have for you is a debut coming out this month, or it's out just maybe a few days ago. It's called Freshwater by Akweke Imezi. I've looked her up on YouTube and she says her name a little bit faster, so she says Akweke Imezi. But Akweke Imezi, she's a Nigerian writer. Of And this is her debut novel about a Nigerian woman studying in America. Her name is Ada. And she has dissociative identity disorder. And that is important when you listen to this excerpt because there's two women referred to and one man. And the two women are two of the split personalities. Okay, so listen to this. 
The whole thing became a loop, as these things often do. Ada stopped sleeping with Ewan, so I stopped fucking him. And instead, they cooked together at his new place, making nasi goreng in a smooth dance across the kitchen floor, with knife and cutting board, onions and meat, oil and spices. He tossed the wok and washed the dishes, and Ada was so happy. I left her alone that night. It had been so long since she could be this happy. She made him watch Serafina, and they ate Cadbury chocolates, and fell asleep, and nothing happened. But then, eventually, I fell back into bed with him, and the cycle started again, and the guilt was everywhere, greasy and thick, and Ada couldn't get away. Eventually, Ewan was the one who ended it. I can't do this anymore, he said. I can't be with you anymore. She makes me happy. For the first time, I let Ada cry in front of him. I watched her sob into his shoulder, into the soft cotton of his t-shirt. She didn't beg him. She didn't ask for anything. Ewan held her and touched her face gently. Why do you have to be so beautiful? He whispered. Ada cried herself to sleep, her face pressed into her chest. She woke up briefly to see Ewan watching her sleep, his hand playing in the curls of her hair, his eyes soft. Okay, so if I was filming this in a totally blind way where, where I didn't have any time to preview it, my initial reaction was kind of negative. I thought, oh, this is kind of so, so prose. And I still don't think the prose sings, except for a few expressions that I quite like. But I've read it now maybe three or four times, and it's growing on me more. But even from the first reading, I think the story sounds really interesting. Especially once you realize that whoever's speaking is one of the split personalities, not Ada, who's the protagonist. And so that kind of narration, and I understand that those points of views alternate in the novel, just based on this one page alone, work fascinatingly. I am completely beguiled by that. So, some things that I like in terms of writing, well, once you know it's split personalities, Ada stopped sleeping with him, so I stopped fucking him. I'm totally seduced by that line. What? I need to know much, much more about that. They were cooking nasi goreng in a smooth dance across the kitchen floor. Love that. The guilt was everywhere, greasy and thick. So there's a few little phrases that really make me think there is some interesting writing here. As a whole, I think there's a lot that's kind of much more limp prose to my ear, but I'm definitely intrigued. So those are my preliminary thoughts. Next is a debut from just over a year ago, January 2017, The Animators by Kayla Ray Whitaker. And this is a novel about two young working class women. They met in college and started collaborating on animation together, and they've been collaborators for 10 years. The novel is largely about their debut film, and one of them, and I don't know the characters' names, it doesn't matter, they're, they're not mentioned in this excerpt, but one of them uses animation to explore herself and heal her wounds, and the other one uses animation to escape from her own life. So that's a fascinating dynamic and they collaborate on films. So their debut film is about the, the one who's using it for, as a healing technique. It's her life story brought to life in the animation. The creativity of the relationship is amazing, but they have a lot of interpersonal conflict, and it's about that. So with that as the background, here is page 112. The entire left side of my body feels heavy and waterlogged, not mine. There's a new weakness overall, a new, ungainly, haphazard feeling. She does not make fun of me. She's either restraining herself, or she's too scared by what she sees. Are you hurting? She says when I wince. Do you need something? I could ask the nurses. There are two seams around her mouth that I haven't seen before. I'll drop something, a cup of water and, once, her phone, and the lines will deepen. My right side's off, too. I try to handle a pencil in front of her. I fist it, manage to write my name, then drop it. The blood drains from her face. She has not asked me about the list yet. I am grateful. After many afternoons spent thinking about it, face to the ceiling, 
I decide that it is something for which to ask for forgiveness. This is the person with whom you have lived for the past ten years, I think. We've never tracked who spent what on equipment, or groceries, or furniture. We wear each other's socks. On several occasions we have used the same toothbrush for weeks, confused as to which belonged to the other. When one of us is in the shower and the other has to pee, we just saunter in and do it. In summers, when the window air conditioning unit cuts not even a breeze through the 80 degree fog of the studio, we strip down and work in our skivvies without a thought. I feel a real pull to that one. And again, I don't think the writing is stupendously wonderful, but it certainly works for me. But what this page captures is a really deep emotional connection between these two, and the narrator is having some kind of serious medical problem, and she's in the hospital, and it sounds really serious. I don't remember reading a page 112 before that has moved me so much. Maybe the Ben Oakry one. But there's something about this. And again, I can't really pull out very much in the way of a sentence or a phrase that really wows me. But there's something here that I think is quite powerful. I guess my favorite part of it is there's two seams around her mouth that I haven't seen before. Then I drop something, the lines will deepen. And then she drops a pencil. She fists it and drops it, and the blood drains from the other woman's face. That was probably my favorite part of it. So yeah, this one makes me really, really curious to read this book. And I'd heard really mixed reviews, and then most recently I'd heard two bookish friends whose ratings were like four or five stars, and I had taken it off my TBR, and then I put it back on. Now I've read page 112, so very interesting. And the last book is a debut novel from October of last year called In the Distance by Hernan Diaz. And Hernan Diaz is a Hispanic-American writer. This is his fiction debut. He has written a couple books, one of which is a... I'm not sure if it's a biography or literary criticism of Jorge Luis Borges. But this is his uh, debut novel. It's set in the 19th century, and it's about a Swedish guy who ends up penniless in California and kind of wandering around the Pacific coast with no money, and it's his adventures there. So here's page 112. The plains were no longer blank, but traversed by lines of certainty, as solid and unquestionable as avenues and thoroughfares. Knowing where he was going, having the assurance of finding the line of emigrants beyond the ring of the horizon, being able to f build a fire and cook proper food on it, hearing the water lap in the vats with each of the burrow's steps, sensing the weight of his full purse in his pocket, feeling the desert was not such a foreign place any more. All these things and impressions turned the plains into an actual territory that could be traversed and exited instead of a suffocating void from which everything, including space itself, had been drained. No change in Huacan's circumstances, however, was as meaningful as owning a horse. On his horse, his very own horse, he had ascended to an order high above most men. Nobody in Sweden, not even the most powerful person he had ever met, the estate manager who collected the fee from his father, owned a horse. Okay, well, the first time I read that to myself, I didn't like it at all, and uh, it's growing on me too, but it's probably... I still have some problems with the writing more than I did in the other two. That second sentence is ridiculously long, and it's not effective. Probably if he'd cut it off instead of a suffocating void, just before that, it pro maybe would have almost worked, but to me it fails. It's a paragraph long. I'm not impressed by it. It's, a, it's not a well-constructed sentence. So that is the turnoff. It's less of a turnoff than when I read it the first time, and when I hear myself read it out loud, to me it kind of flows until instead, instead of all down. Now from there, the story is very interesting. We don't get much here. I know from the synopsis that he arrived penniless, and also I should add speaking no English. So language and uh, learning English is a big theme of the novel, so that's interesting to me. But it sounds like he's not penniless anymore. He's got a horse. He's 
finding his way around the landscape or the geography. It's interesting, but uh, I don't love the prose. The first sentence, the plains were no longer blank, but traversed by lines of certainty. I like that. I'm interested in the thing about the sense of identity and confidence that he has from owning a horse, but you know, this one doesn't grab me particularly. All right, so what ones do you like the best and what do you think my predictions will be? So the choices are eliminate bail, because I wouldn't bother including them, but bail or three stars, that's one category that I will give. Uh, three stars, solid three stars, four stars, five stars. What do you think? So Freshwater by Akweke Emezi, I'm going to say four stars. There's some lively writing, but not a lot of it, so it won't be on the basis of the prose, but the story sounds fascinating, and there's enough evidence of good writing here that I think if it's as good as this page, it's going to be a solid four-star read, but probably the writing will keep it from being a five-star. That's my prediction. The Animators by Kayla Ray Whitaker, I would say four or five stars for me. That's my prediction. Probably four, but if there's enough of this emotional tug, it could be five, because that's always what brings me to five. I love the book if it tugs on my heartstrings. And In the Distance by Hernan Diaz, I'm going to say bail or three stars. I hope that it could be pleasantly surprised, but that's my prediction. So, did any of you guess my predictions exactly? And what are your own reactions to these pages. And what do you think of this new version of the tag? I'd be very curious to hear your thoughts. I have a totally blind version of this tag that will be going up, a collaboration with Juliet Ann, hopefully on the weekend and more coming down the pipe. But this is the new predictions version of the tag. Thanks for watching.